This video is an introduction to the column storage used by column stores or column databases. The easiest way to understand this is to compare it to the more familiar row-based storage used in many relational databases. So imagine we're storing some weather data. We have our reading ID, the census location, a timestamp, and a temperature reading. In a row-based store, we would store each row sequentially. So we'd have the ID, the location, the timestamp, and the temperature for one row, followed by the ID, the location, the timestamp, and the temperature for the next row, and so on. This store layout is good for looking up individual rows by ID, and updating rows can be done in place fairly easily. Now let's imagine we want to store that data in a column store. This time we store each column separately. So we'd have the reading ID column and all of its values, followed by the location column and all of its values, then the timestamp column and its values, and then finally the temperature column and its values. Now one advantage of laying the data out like this is that we can store it more efficiently. So we can apply compression methods column by column since the values in each column will likely be similar to each other. So for example, we could use dictionary encoding for the locations where each location string maps to a number. And then we could store those numbers in the column instead, taking up less space. And then at query time, we'll map back from the numbers to strings before showing the result. The timestamps change by a small amount each time. So we could use delta encoding to store diffs from the previous timestamp for most values rather than the full timestamp value, again, saving space. And for the temperature column, we could use run length encoding if we have the same temperature for many consecutive readings. This layout is well suited to running analytical queries that compute aggregations. So for example, count, average, max, unique, and so on. We'll usually run aggregates on only a few columns at a time and can completely ignore the columns not used in our query. So this results in efficient IO utilization as we don't need to touch the data for the unmentioned columns at all. The column data layout also aligns well with modern CPU architectures enabling vectorized processing. This maximizes CPU cache usage and allows for SIMD, so single instruction, multiple data operations, dramatically speeding up calculations. So that's our intro to column storage, which is the type of storage that ClickHouse uses. For more videos on ClickHouse, check out this playlist next.